This is the first Ryzen Works station motherboard ever released. PCIe 4th generation, 16 core processors, the X570 powered motherboards bring unprecedented bandwidth levels and computing power to an otherwise more gaming friendly mainstream market. And Asus perfectly illustrates that point with the release of its Pro WS X570 Ace motherboard. Let's not forget that this is an AMD 50th anniversary motherboard, meaning a little bit more care on the design and a bit more worry on the aesthetics. A bit like me, um, I want to say. Uh, well designed and uh, aesthetically achieved, I believe is the word. Workstation motherboards are usually focused animals. Um, their range of application goes from the very tranquil server task to raging 3D rendering monsters used by people like Ben, because yes, Ben, I know you're watching. And that's why usually the workstations you find on the market are usually powered by much more expensive X299 and X399 chipset, which support higher core count processors and many more PCIe lanes. But with the coming of X570 chipset and uh, higher core count Ryzen 3000 processors, our mainstream motherboards and processor can finally compete with their much more expensive siblings. Now, starting with the obvious, the Pro WS X570 Ace comes in an eight layered ATX form factor PCB. Our AM4 socket can both support the Ryzen 3000 and Ryzen 2000 AMD CPU series. Its VRM is obviously beefier than any other Asus X570 motherboards. We have a 12 plus to 60 amps power stages organized in six true phases, meaning that we have up to 720 amps CPU centric electrical delivery to sustain the most extreme and stable overclocking, even with a 16 physical core processor. They are being cooled by rather expensive expensive premium heavy uh, heat sinks which have been connected uh, by a copper heat pipes for better heat dissipation. And I'll say this, even tested with a 3900X processor, an overclocked 3900X, uh, I could not detect any kind of thermal throttling and it stayed way below the 70 degree Celsius even for like two or three hours stress test. And that's exactly what you want to see on a workstation motherboard. Um, you want a great VRM and you want a very good cooling solution. And this is by far the best passive cooling solutions I have seen on a mainstream motherboard period. Memory wise, the Pro WX570 Ace can support up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in a dual channel configuration. When powered by a Ryzen 2000 series CPU, you can overclock it up to 3.6 gigahertz. But if powered by a Ryzen 3000 series, you can overclock that RAM up to 4.4 gigahertz, which again is 1000 megahertz more than on the previous uh, generation of AMD Ryzen motherboards. And this is where we can see the direct impact that Ryzen 3000 has on uh, the performances of your board. Staying in the memory, our board can support up to two M.2 solid state drive, which if run with a Ryzen 2000 series CPU and therefore operating in a PCIe third generation standard can transfer up to 32 gigabit per second. But if paired with a Ryzen 3000 series and therefore unlocking the board's PCIe 4.0 feature, our M.2 solid state drive will be able to swap data up to an incredible 64 gigabit per second and obviously in a uh, workstation environment the ability to move large files uh, faster means better video editing video rendering i mean the list goes on and on and on point is this is production time saved but of course with these kinds of speeds our stick will hit quite a bit and that is why we have a large very very thick radial thermo padded heat sink right here note that this will be relevant only for uh, m.2 solid state drive running at third pcie generation simply because uh, fourth generation of m.2 solid state drive come usually with a heatsink pre-mounted 
on them. Taking a closer look to our chipset, the X570 chipset consumes 11 watts of electricity, twice that of its predecessor, and to keep it from getting really, really hot, manufacturers had to come up with an active cooling solution. But that particular one is far, far better than the ones I've seen on other X570 motherboards. For one, it is a 60,000 hours graded Delta Superflow fan. And more obviously, we have a lot more radiating fins on the heatsink uh, itself, which of course translate in more radiating surface and a cooler chipset altogether, which makes sense because again, this motherboard is a bandwidth monster. Export wise, we have four PCIe Express slots, one single lane and single speed, and three metallically reinforced 16 lanes with different speeds. Note that only the first PCIe slot can deliver up to 16 PCIe lane speed. Therefore, this is where you'd want to place your video card in a single configuration for optimal performances. In a dual or even triple video card configuration, all of our PCIe slots will all deliver up to eight bus speed. Coupled with a Ryzen 2000 processor, our lanes will operate in a PCIe third generation standard, meaning one gigabyte per second per lane and per direction. Coupled with a Ryzen 3000 processor, and those very same PCIe exports are running in a PCIe fourth generation standard effectively doubling their bandwidth to two gigabytes per second per lane per direction. And, and in a nutshell, it brings performances and bandwidth level that were absolutely unthinkable on the mainstream uh, market up to now. Storage wise, well, I'm not sad either. Finally, we have less SATA third generation, which are slow and which I've been bit about for the past three a motherboard review and instead we have U.2 connectors which can transfer data up to 64 gigabit per second. Kudos to Asus for this. Back IOIs, first let me note a no-nonsense undressed design which I am absolutely fine with especially when it comes to a workstation motherboard. So starting from the left we have five 10 gigabit USB 3.2 second generation, including a Type-C, two 5 gigabit USB 3.2 first generation, two integrated display outputs, two gigabit LAN, and our usual eight channel S1220A Realtek audio codec. And front panel connector wise, we have two second generation USB front panel connectors, as well as two 5 gigabit 3.2 first generation USB front panel connectors. Cooling wise, we have six PWM fan connectors, one of which can support an all-in-one water pump, but obviously no dedicated uh, custom water cooling water pump connector or thermistors or water flow. This is not an enthusiast motherboard. This is a focus workstation motherboard. So none of this here, which absolutely makes sense. Finally, we have an easy debugger, which is indeed the bare minimum in order to troubleshoot a failed boot. And here I'll risk myself in a little critic. Um, knowing the monstrous ability of this motherboard when it comes to VRM and bandwidth allocation. Um, I would have loved to see a QLED error and as well as some soldered button because these are really good troubleshooting tools which really guide us and refines our troubleshooting experience in case of problems. So on the workstation environment, it is really important to have those. And I would hope that for the next iteration of that particular motherboard, Asus will add these options. Now, I am absolutely not sad or surprised not to see any kind of RGB dressing or connectors on this motherboard. This is a workstation motherboard. So yeah, non-essentials are out, out, out by the window. Now, in conclusion, the Pro WS X570 Ace will cost you $380 to $400 before taxes and Yes, this is not a cheap motherboard, but rarely do we find cheap workstations. And let me start by saying that if you are looking for a gaming motherboard or, or an easy build motherboard or whatever, this is not where you want to be. You could achieve better gaming performances um, for $200 less. This is an extremely focused motherboard, a workstation motherboard, which is here to deliver two things superior computing abilities and a monstrous or gargantuesque amount of uh, bandwidth and, and data transfer 
and to do so reliably. And that is a hard balance to achieve on all workstation motherboards because uh, computing and bandwidth creates a lot of heat and the motherboard is always trying to balance performance and heat and we have those really nice, and I have to underline this again, really premium heat sinks uh, solutions on our VRM and a very advanced uh, active cooling solution on our chipset. So that is what ASUS had to deliver to take this workstation motherboard seriously. Now, is it worth $400? Not in all cases. If you are going to couple this with a Ryzen 2000 processor and therefore lock it to a PCIe third generation uh, uh, standard and bandwidth ability, then absolutely not. The Ryzen 2000 series in general should not be uh, comboed or uh, mixed or operated with an X570 powered motherboard, I would argue. So if you are looking at that, at the Ryzen 2000 series, this is not the board for you, and actually this is not the processor for this board. The only scenario and the only case where this motherboard is worth every penny is if you were to use it in a PCIe 4th generation standard and therefore with a Ryzen 3000 series processor. And in that configuration, and that configuration only, then the Pro WS X570 Ace is probably the most reliable performant workstation motherboard available on the market today. Yeah.